Grayshawn, artificial intelligence is uh, is hot today in the in the world in terms of its importance, its concerns, and autonomous um, weapons as a, as a negative. Uh, um, uh, being able to uh, cheat on uh, college essays is another. Um, people are artificial intelligence taking everybody's job. They're after philosophers, from what I hear. That you're you're soon on the list. <laughs> um, what are some of the philosophical concerns or uh, issues in artificial intelligence? And then let's uh, see how that blends into transhumanism. Yeah, so from what I can see of the, you know, the chat GPT um, uh, rolling out and other similar um, uh, sources of, of artificial intelligence, it, what those things are really good at doing is producing uh, good sort of like reasonable looking answers to questions. Um, they're, they're good politicians, right? Yeah. <laughs> so they can, they can generate <clears throat> what seems like, feels like uh, an authoritative and good answer to a question. Um, but something interesting that's been going on among philosophers and other people who, who study things like truth and semantics is you can throw questions out that really re depend on an expertise expertise about the methods you use, expertise about the content, that you're not going to be able to find from crowdsourcing, from studying large bits of data, that problematize the accuracy of these artificial intelligences. Um, so for example, um, I threw in to JetPT, chat, chat GPT uh, not too long ago, so some questions about summarize this uh, philosophical position, right? Um, or summarize the philosophical position of this philosopher. And they'll give a very, it looks like it was straight from Wikipedia or something, it looks like it was authoritative and correct, but it was exactly the opposite view that this person held, right? <laughs> or it was exactly um, the opposite people who would have held this view. And I could see it because I'm an expert in the field, but if you were just coming to that and trying to get some reliable information, you wouldn't be able to see it, right? Uh, so this is a, a concern that a lot of computer scientists who work in this, and they'll be the first to tell you, like there's no embedded algorithm for truth finding. It doesn't have a conception of truth, um, a meaning of truth embedded in the algorithms. Um, what, it's, what it's trying to do is give you an answer that seems like it's true or something like that. But then in order to have an algorithm that actually gets you something that uh, is tied to truth, you have to have a theory of truth. And that theory of truth has to be somewhat reflected in the algorithms. Mm. And there's lots of theories of truth from philosophers. Uh, pragmatist theories, what's useful. Uh, correspondence theories, what's corresponding to states of affairs in the world. Coherentist theories, right? Mm. So if these aren't in the algorithm, then you're not gonna find any sort of reliable correlation to truth. Um, in the artificial intelligences, and they're not really going to be um, intelligence in an authentic way. Because when we're going out into the world and we're using our conceptual frameworks to answer questions, we do have uh, embedded sort of theory of truth mm. uh, that we're following and that we're trying to apply to our inquisitions. Focus your philosophy of biology guns on uh, transhumanism. Uh, you've uh, uh, been uh, an expert in natural kinds, applying uh, uh, classification criteria to uh, taxa uh, in terms of species, subspecies. Uh, as we're moving into transhumanism, where more and more our body can be replaced by parts uh, that are better than what we're working, you know, simply cochlear implants and uh, starting to be visual aids for people who are totally blind. I mean, it's a, a very rudimentary, but you can see the progress. Uh, what, what are some of the issues going forward? Uh, at what point would a transhuman be a different species? Good. Um, that comes from your notion of species. So um, there are lots of different ways to sort of like uh, uh, tackle this. Um, but a lot of the approaches that philosophers of biology have been taking have been rooted in something called relational essentialism, where 
uh, the things that get to be part of a species essentially are relations with respect to the members of that species to other members. Um, so very weird things about shifting into different species can happen without even thinking about these extreme cases. Mm. So you can have, say that you have a, a group of organisms that's defined relationally with respect to um, you know, a particular evolutionary event. And if you have another uh, subgroup of that group of organisms break off with that same type of event, by stipulation, you get another species, let's say. Um, and then so th things can be happening that are unknown to the majority group that puts them in a different species. <laughs> An example, uh, Willy Hennig, who was a prominent entomologist and really the creator of phylogenetic systematics, uh, he had a definition of species whereby it was a biological species. These are basically a reproductive group of organisms. Uh, but because they're persisting through time, there has to be some constraint on the time boundaries. And so by definition, he says that when branching occurs, you get different species. So now you can have a reproductive group of organisms. Some of them go off and start reproducing by themselves. Mm. And that same group over here now becomes a member, members of a different species, even though before that breaking off, they were members of a previous species. Yeah. So from these newer definitions of species, you have organisms shifting between species all the time. <laughs> so how then would that affect tra a transhuman, as transhumanism becomes more and more sophisticated? Well, I, I think what, what I was trying to get at is it wouldn't be that conceptually difficult to get your mind around because it's a normal occurrence uh -huh. if uh -huh. people are shifting or not just people, but other organisms are shifting across anyway. species, yeah. right? And I think that what, what people are thinking about is, well, all these different traits and all these different characters are getting uh, substituted for one another yeah. across time, and that's how you get to another species. But that's not really where the state of the field is. It's not focused on the traits and characters mm -hmm. of organisms. It's focused on the relations, evolutionary relations, genealogical relations, uh, between that group of organisms and another group of organisms. And when those relations change, a lot of times you get to be a member of a different species. So you can have an organism shifting in between different species throughout its existence.